Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And this week, we're going to tackle topics like finding out what your partner is saying behind your back, not having the, quote, right kind of sex, and Mm -hmm. not blaming the other woman. But Mm -hmm. before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health professionals, family therapists, relationship people. We are just two people with microphones and the capacity to put this out into the world for for whoever (laughs) wants to hear it. (laughs) Yes, Sam and I are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We are only here to offer our ever humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs on the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. Sam, before we get into this week's check-in topic, we at Just Break Up have a super exciting announcement. Um, do we? We, we do. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of this year, um, we announced that we had started our own independent podcast network. It's called Duvid, and you can find out more about the podcast network um, at duvid.media. That's D-U-V-I-D-E. And why we are talking about the network today is because we're very excited to announce that Just Break Up now has a cousin advice podcast within our network. We are so lucky to be now helping um, represent and produce uh, Bunny Michael's podcast, XO Higher Self. You might recognize Bunny Michael from um, we interviewed them back in February. You might recognize them from Um, their higher self memes um, or their Instagram account uh, at Bunny Michael. Um, They are an amazing like multidisciplinary artist and um, spiritual guide. I I know that sounds like really woo woo, but like they really, they do what we do, which is like offer perspective shifting advice about how to access like your higher self, your kinder self, your more compassionate self. Um, They just do an amazing, amazing job. And we love their podcast. And we're now so proud to represent them. Check out XO Higher Self um, uh, to help support David and support other independent podcasters like us. I love it. Yeah, Bunny is fantastic. Um, Just like a wonderful, kind, super intelligent, super sort of grounded person, um, offers amazing advice and perspective. Uh, I'm really glad that they're joining us in our, in our little family. Um, and super excited to see where their podcast goes and, um, and what sort of amazing cross collaboration we can do with them because they're amazing and fantastic. Yeah. If you don't, um, just believe us in general, <laughs> you <laughs> should check them out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Make sure to check out the podcast, obviously, but also we'll, um, we're going to feature bunny on our podcast in the near future. And we're also going to do like an Instagram live with them. Um, yeah, they're just, I really, I learned so much from their podcast and from their work. So we're just so excited to be in collaboration with them. Um, so yeah, check out XO Higher Self anywhere you listen to podcasts. This week's check-in topic is a little bit of a spin or a play on our reviewing Instagram memes. Um, mm-hmm. Earlier this week, I I saw a Huffington Post article like on my Twitter or something that was how to know if you're the toxic one in the relation in the romantic Ooh. relationship. I know, right? I was like well, I reading don't this. I don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> And so they have like six things that's like, you should look out for this because this will mean that you are toxic or whatever. Um, Love the idea that there's a toxic one in a relationship, (laughs) right? Like it's just like, it's always just one person. The other person's like fine and great and 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 definitely. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm, And then mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. the, there's the evil toxic one. (laughs) Yeah, it's us. (laughs) Um, We are Gemini's, so that makes sense. Okay, so uh, here are here are the six things they say you should look for if you are the toxic one or like would be indi- indicative of that. You're sure. You don't communicate openly. Sure. What, do you what think does about that mean? That? <laughs> what does openly um, mean? 
Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they just say like, uh, you know, communication is the key to health, healthy relationships. If you refuse to engage in healthy communication or try to improve your communication skills, then you're bringing toxicity into the relationship. Maybe you pick a petty fight um, or don't address issues head on. I'm paraphrasing. Um, sure. Yeah. Eh, I'm a little mm. like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I think you've really shifted my perspective on different conflict styles and how we mm -hmm. prioritize different conflict styles over others and how that like, I don't know, there's merit in all different types, types of communication styles. Obviously, I'm not trying to tell people to not talk about their feelings or not be honest or be cruel, you know, like for sure. Obviously those, or like refuse to engage in engage, a meaningful yeah. like conflict resolution with your partner yeah but like i don't know i also like this idea of like it sort of smacks of this idea of like you have to tell your partner everything and i'm like i mm. think that people should have privacy right. right like they may not need to have secrets but they have the right. right to like not communicate all of their deepest feelings and if i'm somebody who knows that I'm frustrated with Peter in this moment and I will get over it in 20 mm. minutes because the thing that I'm frustrated about, I know is about seven other yeah. things that have nothing to do with him. Then like it actually behooves me to be like, I'm going to process through the shit that I need to process through now and then decide whether or not this is important enough for me to bring to him. <laughs> right. Like, yes, I totally agree. So yeah, open, I think open communication is important, but I, I want to also like steer clear of the idea that like open communication looks only one way. And if you're not yeah. doing it that way, you're toxic. Yeah. I think that's my feelings about this. Is that like, do I agree with this? Yes. With a little shrug emoji. I do. For sure. Um, but I, I don't think there's a blanket way of communicating or this, this is, I would avoid a blanket statement. That's all I'm going sure. to say. For sure. I wouldn't talk about blankets here. <laughs> Duvets, comforters, <laughs> not even going to talk about them. <laughs> Good one. So, so. <laughs> Okay, up next, negative emotions consume you. Ooh. I know. This means you're toxic in a relationship. Um, in toxic relationships, this is a quote, um, feelings of love and admiration are replaced with feelings of resentment, jealousy, and low self-esteem. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is okay, so I get that, but also like the the tagline consumed with uh, 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 negative emotions consume you. Like, what if you're depressed, or like, what if you're feeling insecure, or sure. what if you are, I don't know, dealing with stress? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure that would make me a toxic person, but also like I do see how sometimes our emotions bleed into our relationship health. How about that? Yeah. I think it's more like negative emotions are, first of all, like neg negative emotions again. Yeah, negative, like, positive. What is that? Right? What does that mean? Uh, but like they're consuming you and you're expecting your partner to fix them, right? Mm -hmm. Like that mm -hmm. feels toxic mm -hmm. to me. But like having feelings of jealousy doesn't mean that you're a toxic person. It just means you're having feelings of jealousy. Yes. And if you're like proactively finding ways to not act on those or change your own perspective or reach out to your partner in a, in a yes. compassionate way and say like, I'm struggling with this. Can we figure out a way to work on this together? Like, yeah, that's great. But if you're like, I'm jealous and so stop doing the thing that you're doing, or I'm feeling insecure. So like you can't have things right. Like then that's where it becomes like toxic. Yes. Totally agree. Um, the article also talks about like, you know, exercising emotional self-soothing techniques, which I think is great um, mm -hmm. in terms of if you are feeling, quote, negative emotions or emotions like resentment or jealousy that can really um, eat at the core of your relationships, then how are you practicing a self-soothing technique to like not take that out on your partner all the time? So, yeah. Sure. If we were grading this, I'd be like, mm, seven out of 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you have unspoken expectations if you are the toxic person in the relationship. Uh, I I think that's 
pretty good. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. Um, I think it's okay to have expectations of your partner. I don't think that right. it's fair to them for you, them to be unnamed and that you're like constantly like testing them against those expectations without them knowing that they're yeah. being tested. Um, and I think that if your expectations are also like unreasonable, then that is definitely yeah. can lead to toxicity. So I think this is like not bad. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to love you perfectly and no one can read your mind. Right. So it is, as the article says, it's unfair to hold onto expectations without discussing them. Um, use assertive language, not shame or criticism to express your wants and needs. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, next one. You want full control. <laughs> yes, that's toxic for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full control, controlling behaviors like controlling finances, how your partner spends time with, how they spend their time and with whom. Oh, good one. Uh, and wanting them to behave in a certain way. Man, I don't know if you ever had a partner like that, but there's nothing more dehumanizing than having a partner be like, don't act like that. Or like mm -hmm. when we're around people, I don't want you to be like this. Um, that's fucked up. I know, right? <laughs> oh, my know. heart hurt just hearing you say that those words. <laughs> I, I'm I'm thinking of specific memories. I cannot I, believe I didn't punch that person in the face. Um, but instead, instead, I got my heart broken by them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next one is you display. Of oh, this is interesting. You display a pattern of maladaptive behaviors. Mm. Some common maladaptive behaviors include repeated violations of boundaries, love bombing (parentheses), mm. giving excess compliments and gifts to gain power in the relationship, mm -hmm. breadcrumbing. I love, mm. like that as a verb. Uh -huh. oh, offering small morsels of interest, uh, public embarrassment. And lack of ownership or remorse for one's missteps. Maladaptive behaviors. I like that. I mean, for real. Yeah. Those are all yeah. those are all things that uh, are very toxic like, in no. relationships. Yeah, like, please don't yeah. do that. <laughs> Good job, HuffPost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, last one. You are toxic in the relationship if you lack self-awareness. Mm. Yeah, I, I would be like maybe... Six out of 10 on this one, because to be honest, like I am seeing a new therapist. Uh, good job for me or congrats to me. <laughs> yeah, who good I job. love. Cheers good. to me and this therapist. And I feel like all I do is self-reflection between like my very like emotionally rich relationship and our fucking podcast. Like all mm -hmm. I do is be like, what are my issues and how can I work on them? For sure. And I fucking unearthed like a pattern in me at therapy yesterday that is a toxic pattern that I got from one of my parents that I like mm -hmm. hate and also was like ashamed to admit was in me you know so like let's define self-awareness as um like somebody who is able to practice that and not perfect it is that fair sure because we're always discovering more about ourselves. I don't know. Maybe I'm like overanalyzing this. I mean, I think if you're using your self-awareness as like a weapon against yourself, like that's not yeah. super helpful of like, um, I do this and this thing is bad. And so therefore I am bad, right? Like that's not great. But I do right. think that like self-awareness around your own patterns and your own expectations and your own understanding of the world is important yeah. in relationships. Are there relationships that function that aren't toxic where neither person is accessing self-awareness? Probably, right? Where yeah. they just like, yeah. I don't know, like fell into each other's laps and their worldviews completely aligned. And so they like work together. Um, yeah. But I do think that healthy amounts of self-awareness are definitely an antidote to toxicity because it means yes. that we're, we're not doing these things where we're putting unreasonable expectations on people that we're sort of really other focus, like everyone yeah, else weird. needs to solve my problems mm -hmm. and not me, like that kind of stuff. So I think self-awareness can be an antidote to toxicity, but I don't know that like you need self-awareness to not be toxic. Well, and I, what, what I was trying to get across is like, 
sometimes I think I hear it in our letters and I hear it in myself of like my assessment of people is like, oh, well, they're just dealing with their daddy issues or they are, an, you know, we like to pathologize our partners like, oh, they have an um, emotion, an anxious attachment style or whatever. Right. Um, and maybe just because our partners aren't self-aware in the way that we think that we are self-aware of them. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think it's just an ongoing process to figure yourself out. Um, and so maybe self-awareness, maybe I'm stuck on the word self-awareness because it's, it's not malleable enough or it's not like ongoing enough, sure. but I, but there's can, like, that's not self-awareness. That's like other assumption, <laughs> right? Cause you're like, yeah. you're assuming, you know, what your partner is experiencing and why mm -hmm. they're experiencing it. And like, you never will because you're not in your body. So like, right. What's the story you're telling yourself about why they're doing the things that they're doing? Like that's the actual yeah. self-awareness practice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Well, that was the Huffington Post article, like how to know you're the toxic one in the relationship. <laughs> Great. Do you know, are you the toxic one? <laughs> uh, I am as always. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you want to get into these letters? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so this letter comes from Fiddle, because I was played like one, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Whose pronouns are she, her, who's writing from somewhere down south. Hi, y'all. First, I want to start off by saying that I am so grateful for all that you do for the heartbroken and happy and not heartbroken, but normal feeling or sad or every other oh. emotion <laughs> folks around the world. Listening to your podcast truly makes my days a little brighter, and I love you both so much. You provide the advice I wish I could give and receive. I'll get to my predicament. Sorry in advance for the length, but get excited and buckled up because it's a wild <laughs> ride. It is wild, y'all. It's, it's a wild <laughs> ride, for sure. I am a 25-year-old bisexual female who broke up with my 31-year-old male, now ex-boyfriend, let's call him Adam, two weeks ago. We were in a relationship for a year and a half that felt like I shit you not something out of a fairy tale. I sound so fucking stupid saying something like that, but it was true. We loved each other so much, had excellent communication, had an awesome sex life. Our disagreements, maybe one to three times a month, always ended in these beautiful debriefs where he would tell me that he felt a little bit closer to me and loved me a little bit more. He told me he wanted to get married one day, have a small army of kids, grow old with me. Somehow he made it, he made all the cheesy shit I used to make fun of sound nice. I was so comfortable around him and was constantly telling my friends and family it was the healthiest relationship I had ever been in, especially since my previous relationship of two years ended in infidelity on her part that left me devastated and very wary to trust again. After a year or so of recovering and growing, I found Adam. He made it feel like all that trauma and heartbreak was worth it since it led me to him. That is until one evening when Adam asked me to check his Uber Eats to see the status of our delivery. And right as I was checking, a text notification from a girl's name I didn't recognize came up at the top of the screen. The preview said, you need to break up with her. She's fucking nuts. Obviously, I immediately started internally freaking out and clicked the message. Right above that message, she had sent some lovely nudes. The day before that, a song she had sent <laughs> with some nudes. fucking... Yeah, right? I'm glad they were lovely. Uh... The day before that, a song that she had sent with some fucking goo goo ass romantic title that I can't remember. Two days before that, some three to four text exchange about some benign part of their day. This is the only evidence that he had been responding to her. All the other messages I'm assuming he sent had been deleted. Above that, more nudes from her paired with a giant paragraph about all the reasons why Adam should break up with me. To name a few, I'm too liberal. I'm quote skinny fat. I'm not on social media. I don't know why these are reasons to break up with someone, but whatever. Everything else before this had been deleted. Okay, so at this point, my heart is falling out of my asshole, and I'm confused <laughs> because I have no clue who this girl is, and there's no way that this could be real. I'm not on social media, so the only reason she knew things about me must have been from what he had directly told her. I'm freaking out, I'm, and I search my name in his text to see if he's been saying things about me to anyone else. This is like a fucking gone girl twist for me. Like over a hundred texts he was sending to multiple oh people, God. some of whom are mutual acquaintances, even his family, his mom, just railing me. 
complaining about me, making fun of me for my insecurities, like making fun of my body, what the fuck, asking people to call him saying there was an emergency so he could have an excuse to leave when we were hanging out, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, question mark, lots of question marks and exclamation points on that one. (laughs) Just like random straight up lies about stuff I never did. Like we would always split the check on dates and at dinners and he was telling people that I was making him pay for everything and I was bleeding him dry. It was psychopathic. He was copying and pasting these pre-made messages, shitting on me and sending them to like seven separate people at a time. <laughs> that these is mess- what the, the That's point the in this point letter, for you. <laughs> that the fucking copying and pasting, like, uh, it's deeply it's attention seeking behavior. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Just Are like you the start toxic one in the relationships? You know? Do you copy and paste <laughs> lies about your partner to multiple uh, people? Like, <laughs> continue. Should have added that one to the list. Yeah. These messages were going back at least like five months before I couldn't keep speed scrolling in silence. I immediately confronted him first about the girl. He told me that she was some girl he met like a year ago who had moved to another state recently and that she was, quote, crazy and insecure and wouldn't stop sending him the pics even though he asked her not to. Doubt. When I asked how long she had been sending him pictures, he said six months. I asked why he didn't block her, and he said it was because she was his, quote, close friend and, quote, you can't just cut off friends like that, quote, I, quote, must not know how friendship works, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, Sam has still not sent me his butt. Yeah. I haven't seen his butt. <laughs> so this is not how friendships work. I'm just kidding. Uh, when I asked him about the text he was sending about me and told him how much they hurt me, he was telling me things like it's unhealthy of me to, quote, not allow him to vent to people. And I need to, quote, chill out and, quote, not get so hysterical. I'm not an idiot. I broke it off immediately. When he realized it was I was serious, Adam deadass told me I was, quote, breaking his heart and asked me, quote, how could I do this to him? L-M-A-O. Obviously, humor aside, I'm shocked and pretty devastated. I'm having a pretty hard time since then. Almost every complaint Adam had, he never once brought up with me. I would have been happy to hear them and work through things with him if he did. I've never once given him a reason not to be open and honest with me about these feelings. This whole time we were together, Adam was constantly telling me how incredible I was, how he mm. loved how he feels, how he how much love he feels for me, and how he was so lucky to have found the person that he was going to spend the rest of his life with. I thought we were going to get married. All my friends and family were also so astonished. They all loved Adam as much as I did. No one really knows what to say because basically everyone is also simultaneously processing that the person that they thought that Adam was is essentially the opposite of who he truly is. He was so charming and kind and seemed incapable of the things that I saw on his phone and the things that he said to me when I confronted him. My question to y'all isn't really, did I make the right decision ending things or should I call him? Because the obvious answer is, of course, I made the right decision. Never fucking again, even so much as look at that motherfucking psychopathic fuck. All I'm just, caps. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm just more concerned about how I'm ever supposed to trust anyone again. Like I said earlier, my previous girlfriend and I broke up because she cheated on me. Am I the problem? It took me so long before I could open up again and allow myself to have another relationship where I could fully trust someone again. How will I ever allow myself to be vulnerable again? I thought I found that person I could trust and I was wrong again. Will I ever be right? Even if I find the right person, I worry I won't be fully able to trust them after something like this. IDK, my whole world feels pretty bleak right now. Zero out of 10 would not recommend to a friend. Anyway, if y'all have any advice or words of wisdom, please do drop a girl some hints because I am essentially a mess. I'm adopting a cat this week, but that's the only thing I've come up with so far. (laughs) I really appreciate you taking the time to read this, even if it doesn't go on air. Honestly, even just typing this out has helped a bit. I love you both so much. Thank you for gracing us with your beautiful voices, loving hearts, and sensational advice. (laughs) Oh, Phil, Fiddle, I am so sorry that this happened to you. What a devastating and confusing way to be um, crushed by what you thought was a great relationship. Like this is just full stop. This is a horrible way to have your your happy relationship end. Horrible, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's. 
it's horrible in every in every relationship to have a relationship that you don't want to end to end, you know, or 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 to come to its close or whatever, you know, but it's not like you were fighting for months. It's not like you were trying to work through things and all of a sudden you realized you weren't going to make it work. This, this came out of nowhere. This didn't Mm. even come out of left field. This was in a different fucking park. (laughs) And I can't, I can't imagine how upside down my entire life would be if something like this happened to me. So I'm just sending you so much empathy and also like, yeah, girl, this is fucking insane. This is wild. <laughs> like, this is wild that this happened. Um, yeah, I would feel upside down, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because it seems like there was a whole secret world going on. Right. And and that's not helpful in a relationship. Yeah. Um, and I, I do want to create space for the idea that, like, it is okay for us to vent to other people about things that our partner is doing or things that we're frustrated with. Right. Like I think that that can be a healthy way to process through uh, our own emotions and like get someone else's opinion and, and do some work around that. Like, it doesn't sound like that's what this is. Like the fact that the same message was sent to like seven different people doesn't feel like venting to me anymore. Right. Like that feels like a attention seeking. uh, Yeah. Just like, like, like we all seek attention. I don't mean that in such a simplistic way, but like, it seems like he was getting something out of it beyond the, the processing of, of, you know, beyond the, the the catharsis of processing to somebody else. For sure. Absolutely. And he was Uh, getting nudes. Let's not forget. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, um, (laughs) no, I just am, I'm remembering the nudes part of this conversation too. Well, and no, it's no, like, I honestly there's like. There's just like, <laughs> he can't control if people are sending him nudes, but it's also like, you can tell someone to stop. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like if yeah, somebody was like, them, you should delete, them. you should, right. You should break up with Peter because he's crazy. I'd be like, um, excuse me. Like, don't talk about my husband that way. Like, yeah, this is not acceptable behavior. Um, yeah. please don't do this anymore or like just yeah. block the person or like, wow, what are you, what kind of friend are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this isn't, this is not a friendship. Um, whatever. <laughs> no, not whatever. Because, <laughs> cause honestly, like I did the same thing when I was like writing out notes about this letter, I was like, it's okay to process, you know, th- there is such a thing as like healthy venting with other people and this ain't it. And, you know, much to our own chagrin, you know, our partners are allowed to process their experience with us, like with other people, but it has to be done with respect, yada, 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 copy and paste session. So creepy. And then I just wrote, nudes <laughs> because I realized like <laughs> and also on top of this you know he's been getting nudes from this girl for six months and did nothing about it and that tells me you know not that they're like not judging he among us without sin you know what I mean <laughs> absolutely for sure <laughs> but also like you know you fucking didn't you didn't stop any of that and you're right. trash talking your girlfriend, this person who's supposed to be your future wife, like copy and paste, man. That is so, that is so <laughs> chaotic. <laughs> That's it's attention seeking to me. It's like, it's there's there. You want more than just getting, you know, being heard, I guess. For sure. Absolutely. Um, and part of the, the real challenge in this situation is recognizing the fact that this person who you were in a relationship was both of these things at the same time, right? Like you Whoa. say in your letter, like, how dare you, tur- Sam fucking, <laughs> right? <No. laughs> he like turned out to be the exact opposite of the, of the person that we thought he was. And I want to just say that like, he's not the exact opposite of the person that you thought he was. He's a, he's a multifaceted person. And part of that was the person wow. who you thought he was that you experienced. And part of him was this secret keeping, secret texting person. And he was both of those at the same time. You didn't get access to the secret part for sure. But I I want to say that because I want to just like create some space for opening up to the capacity to trust again, which I think is part of which is you trusting your own instincts in this, right? Like it wasn't because you didn't, he was like showing you some part of him and you weren't seeing enough of it, right? And it doesn't mean that he is like, 
I don't know, a wolf in sheep's clothing or whatever, where he's like underneath is like this horrible thing. And, and the outside was just, um, it was just like lies, right? Like he could have really felt deeply for you and also done this shit and could have like held both of those things in his heart at the same time, because he is a complicated, emotionally yeah. rich person I mean, who is that's desperately needy for attention for sure. Like let's yeah. be clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam's not, I totally agree. I think Sam's not saying this to help you empathize or give you a reason to, to go back to this person. We no, totally agree. This yeah. is, uh, we're proud of you for being like, uh, excuse me. You know, don't you dare tell me to like calm down, not get hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> hysterical. Yeah. Let me show you hysterical. Let me. It's, uh, yeah. Offer anyway, this man um, a dissertation on the gendered uh, aspects of that word. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, we, you know, you made the right decision. And also I think the hardest part about healing from this is going to be reckoning with that duality as Sam, Sam brought up, you know, and I think it's important to say, like, say to yourself right now, he did love me. Those things were real. And also he was obviously hurting and needing and um, disrespecting me at the exact same time, you know? Yep. Um, and therefore his love isn't enough. His, his love isn't good enough. Yep. Um, I think we can stay stuck in like a fantasy of people's affection for us if we don't see the whole picture, right? Yep. Um, and yeah, he, you guys he was he was giving you a polished version of himself or like a that only like sam said only one side of him um man it confuses me like i'm confused by this letter <laughs> the the emotional whiplash of it i i i i feel kindred with your family like uh wait what he did what you know right and but i i think it's ahead. like the problem wasn't that you trusted him, that you trusted right. your experiences of him, that you trusted that he, the things that he was saying were true. Like, that's not the issue. Like the issue was that he was simultaneously seeming in love with you. And I think probably was right. Right. And also doing this stuff um, and his own duplicity in that, like his own lack of yeah. self connection, right. His own inability to reconcile these He's like, the two opposing one. things. No self-awareness. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Huff post. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so like throughout this, I want you to make sure that you know that you can trust your own experiences, right? Like you yeah. trusted him because you were given this information about him, right? Like, and you can trust that the things that he said to you were not, uh, were not good, <laughs> were <laughs> grossly inappropriate that the behavior that he was doing with all of this texting was inappropriate as well, right? Like, yeah. you can trust your own experiences. The fact that he was lying to you doesn't mean that you can't trust yourself yeah. or trust other people too, right? Like, absolutely, there's always a possibility that the people that we love are going to be doing awful things that we aren't seeing. Like, but that is part of this situation. But I think one yeah. of the things that we can do to help us learn to trust again is to remind ourselves, like, the trusting's not the problem. The yes, trusting exactly. is beautiful and wonderful and 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 things that make us human and connect us with other people. The lying's the issue. But the fact that we yeah. trusted someone who's a liar doesn't mean that we there's something wrong with us or that it's our yes. fault, right? The lying is the fault. <laughs> like right. The we, lying is the problem. We've seen this in a couple letters or, you know, hundreds of letters, but we've answered a couple letters like this. And I always go back to the revelation I had, which, you know, because we letter writers write in and say, like, um, I can't believe I let myself fall in love again. I can't I can't believe I let myself trust someone. I can't believe I was right. vulnerable again. But as Sam said, like all of those things are beautiful, noble, necessary things for connection. Love didn't hurt you. This one asshole did, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. trusting you did the right thing here. You trusted him and then he proved to be untrustworthy. And then you did the double right thing by saying, nope, I'm going to pull my trust back because you did not respect it. Like you didn't reciprocate it. Um, sure. Trust didn't hurt you. This asshole did. Um, being <laughs> vulnerable, being vulnerable didn't hurt you. Right. This this situation would hurt if you had the thickest skin in the world, you know, like For sure. being vulnerable. It would absolutely. Right. 
And I know that I know it's scary. I know it's scary to put yourself out there again. And it will take time, especially with like a whiplash experience like this. Um, I think right now, just work on trying to give yourself space to heal from this like huge plane crash of a breakup. Like I, I, I can't believe how fast this went. You know, it's like zero to zero to 180 or zero to uh, what is the phrase? Like there's a 180 zero turn. Zero to 60. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> zero to 100 maybe. <laughs> yeah. Just 180 miles per hour <laughs> is how fast your heart was beating. I'm sure when you read those text messages. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just give yourself some space to heal from this, this like chaotic, um, explosion that like really uprooted your life. But in that space, keep affirming trusting didn't hurt me. This Mm -hmm. asshole did. It's a good thing to trust people, you know, and that there's somebody out there who they're, they're not just somebody I, I don't, I should like not minimize it in the way there are many people out there who don't behave like this. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> there's a and lot. Who will, be, who, who will be more respectful of your time, your trust, your love, and your energy? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope that he learned a very important lesson from this whole experience. <laughs> Honestly, I'd love to talk to him to be like, and I have so, so what many were you questions. getting out of this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Adam, and if how, you're listening. And how lovely <laughs> were these nudes <laughs> that you seem to think were just fine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my darling, we hope that this helps. Thank you so much for writing. Absolutely. We love you. All right. This next letter comes to us from Tender Ness, whose pronouns are he, him, who is writing to us from the void's loneliest corner. Oh, no. Whoa. Get out of there. <laughs> no, stay right there. We'll be right there in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Salmon, Salmon Sierra. <laughs> I write to you for your gentleness and wisdom. I could use some of both right now. I've been listening to y'all since the beginning of the podcast and so appreciate the care and love you bring to every letter. I look forward to Mondays because listening to you, your weekly episodes is so grounding for me. Here is my predicament. Long story short, I can't have sex the way most people can have sex. And I'm struggling so much to get over the shame of this. The longer version, my partner, they, them, and I have been together for a little over a year. I'm a trans man and they're non-binary. So, oops, and they're non-binary and we're both in our mid to late twenties. My partner is so sweet, meticulous and gentle, and I feel so cared for in our relationship. We are also quite compatible sexually. We're both switches and kinky and loves trying new things together while also communicating about our sexual wants and needs throughout. One thing that has been really heavy on my heart and causing me a lot of shame, however, is that I can't receive penetrative sex due to having pelvic floor dysfunction. I've been to a doctor and then a physical therapist about this, and there are things that I could do to try to help with this, but for the time being, it seems like nothing is changing. I told my partner very early on about having pelvic floor dysfunction, and they never once asked to have penetrative sex, implied that they needed it that with me, or otherwise said that they were dissatisfied with our sex lives. On the contrary, they have assured me that they love having sex with me, love how we have sex, and think I'm really attractive and have no expectations around what sex has to look like for us. Despite all that, I still just can't get over the shame about not being able to, quote, give them penetration as a sexual partner. It feels like my body is wrong and broken and even more shameful because I'm trans. So it feels like that's already a strike against me body wise since I don't have the body parts people expect a man to have. It feels like a constant onslaught of people talking about men as having certain body parts and people talking about sex as being certain acts. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel so small. Another complicating factor is that I would also theoretically really like to have penetrative sex if it wouldn't be so painful for me. It has always sounded like a nice way to have sex. I just can't physically do it. When people talk about or refer to having sex, I feel so embarrassed for not having, I feel so embarrassed for not being able to do what they do and it not even being on the radar that I can't. It feels like everyone is talking as if we're all on the same page and I don't have a copy. 
small. And I don't even have a copy of the book, even though I'd really like to, and I'm embarrassed about how much I'd like to and how much I've struggled to get a copy. Oh, oh I know. Um, I've had past partners or friends refer to non-penetrative sex as, quote, just messing around, which mm-hmm. I know objectively is bullshit and can easily point out the flaws in it, but it doesn't change the fact that when I'm vulnerable and intimate with my partner, the thought creeps in. I feel like a silly kid who can't do the cool thing or does it all wrong and is going to be laughed at. I know my partner has mostly penetrative sex with past partners. And I know that penetrative sex plays a part in how people have, most people have sex. So I just can't stop picturing that as what my partner wants or enjoys more or really liked in the past. I know that my partner can have enjoyed something in the past and not need it or want it now, but boy, is this hard to internalize. Mm. Recently, we were having a really sweet, flirty evening, uh, sharing past stories of times with past partners, which is something we've done before. And my partner shared an instant that that involved penetrative sex with someone. They asked permission before sharing details and I gave it. But now I can't stop fixating on that story they shared. My heart is just aching thinking about it all. Do you have any advice or affirmation around this? Don't worry. I'm going to talk to my therapist about this soon. But in the meantime, (laughs) it might be nice to feel less alone in this. Thank you so much. It means a lot to think about y'all reading this, even if you don't end up using it on the podcast. Y'all are the best. Tenderness. I know. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tenderness, for writing in to us and trusting us with this really vulnerable experience that you're having um, and all of the self-doubt and um, and shame that you're feeling around the fact that you can't have sex in this particular way mm-hmm. that folks have normalized and socialized us to think is the only or best or right way of having sex. Um, right. And I'm really sorry that, that, that sort of conversation is impacting you so deeply in this way. Um, yeah, that, that really, that really sucks. And yeah. I also want to say, I'm so happy that you found a partner who loves yeah. to have sex with you and loves to have sex with you in ways that is not just, <laughs> penetrative sex, right? Like yeah. that is uh, kinky and beneficial for both of you and really hot. Um, I'm glad that that is something that's in your life, even as I know that it can be a challenge to have something good in your life as you're struggling with shame around, yes. around that thing oh as God. well. Shame is a poison in that way. It can take mm-hmm. like the, it can take the thing that's right in front of us, telling us exactly how much we are lovable and shame is like, nope, that thing is lying to you, you know? Absolutely. Um, And I totally agree. I mean, all of, how about this? All of this makes so much sense. As much as I don't want this weighing on your heart and as much as I'm going to try to convince you to let go of this shame, it makes so much sense. You know, Mm -hmm. sex has and can, continues to be um, defined as as a phallic penetrative act, you know, even mm-hmm. in queer communities, like even in kinky communities, like we socially, culturally talk about sex in a way that is penetrative and therefore non-penetrative sex is inherently in our mind a an opening act for <laughs> sure yeah for the obvious conclusion right and that's just an, that's just a social assumption we make or like that's just a that's just what our brains do because of our heteronormative penetrative indoctrination about mm-hmm. sex you know like this is just mm-hmm. this is everywhere it's in media you know and and on top of that you know let's talk about how sex is has historically been connected to value, you know, and Mm. to, and to our, our virtue and our morals. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you have like religious trauma about it, um, or, you know, your cultural, social indoctrinations about sex, like even in the media, like we are told things about sex repeatedly from, from the moment we under, or before we understand what sex is, like we're getting Mm -hmm. all of these messaging from all different places that is, there's a good way to have sex and there's a bad way to have sex and there's a right way to have sex and there's a wrong way to have sex. And we're getting, not only that, we get, 
we get um, contradicting messages about it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a sexual person, but don't be a slut, you know? Um, For sure. Uh, fuck in this certain way, but don't fuck in this way, you know, like. Absolutely. Um, have reproductive heteronormative sex and all other sex is a different is 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 bad or whatever um for sure um sex outside of marriage is bad sex um that doesn't result in babies is invalid you know we mm -hmm. get this conditioning from so many different places so of course of course your tender beautiful capable heart is feeling really conflicted even though your partner is standing there saying i love fucking you even though your partner has never <laughs> yeah. asked for more, you know, of course your, your heart is tired doing all of this work, trying to protect you from this conditioning that you, that you never asked for. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And I'm just going to say it. There are lots of people out there who do not have penetrative sex with their partners. Right. Yep. I know some of them, right. Where yep. it's just like not on the table. It's not of interest. Folks and of all gender identities, too. For sure. And all Absolutely. sexualities. Yep. Absolutely. And there are folks who have penetrative sex and it sucks, <laughs> right? Like, it's yeah. not good for it. Like, it's not it's not working for them. And they they are, you know, not necessarily choosing, but they've been socialized to think that that is sex and that's the only way and that's how they have to have it. Right. So, like, yeah. I just want to say both of those things out loud to you because I want to normalize this idea that like penetrative sex is not the be all end all of, of sex. It is not, um, it is not something that everyone engages in or that everyone enjoys and we can decide what's available to us and not available to us. And the definition of sex that we use in our relationships with ourselves and with other people doesn't have to be the definition that other people are using, right? Like we get to decide what sex is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think I'm reminded of Angela Chen's book, Ace, which talks about asexuality, um, but also talks about our weird fucked up understandings of what sex is and isn't and what, what we need to be doing to have right. sex and like what are the idea that there's an innate sexual drive in all of us that's leading towards the same type of sex <laughs> and how that's right. like all bullshit. Um, yeah. and again, that book was like very helpful for me to unpack a lot of different things that I had been thinking about sex. Um, and I would recommend it for you, uh, not to say that you are in any way ace, but in the ways in which Angela yeah. in that book, like deconstructs this idea of sex because yeah, it opened my eyes, not just to the idea that I know people who don't have sex in the way that I would have defined sex as a younger person, but also just the idea that I don't know anything about anyone else's sex life. Right? Yes. Like that was what was most eye opening to me. It was like, oh, I understand that people are like as emotionally rich as I am. I understand that people like are as culturally rich as I am. And then I read this book and I was like, oh, my God. And people are also like as sexually rich as I am. Wow. Too, right? like, wow. Have totally. All sorts of different experiences, definitions, wants, desires, like oh, there is no one size fits all that I had been assuming that it was. And so I want to offer that to you and say that yeah. I totally understand this societal pressure to have particular types of sex. And I totally, underst I totally understand the shame that comes with the idea that we can't or don't want to or don't have that kind of sex. And I want to offer you this idea that we don't actually know what's going on in other people's bedrooms, right? Yes. Like, probably lots of people feel a lot of shame about the types of sex that they're having with other people. Yes. Right. Like it's not just you in the situation, of course, because of your identity as a trans person. And of course, because of this thing that's going on with your pelvic floor, there's like a whole lot of different layers to this, but I want to offer you the understanding that lots of people around us are feeling shame about the type of sex that they're having. Like you're not alone in this. You are not in the loneliest corner of the void. Aww. I'm sure that there are a lot of readers or listeners yeah, like, let's right turn now. Turn on the light. Turn on the sure. light in that loneliest like, corner. Look, look at all the people around room. me who are also feeling all the shame about all this yeah. shit, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, I'm not alone in this. Like, can we choose something different? Can we decide yeah. to do something different? Um, and I want you to, I want to say that because I do want you to feel 
the love and connection that people have and the fact that this isn't this isn't just your burden to bear. Like other yeah. folks are Sierra and I included are interested yep. in figuring out how we can do something different and take this shame away from you because it's not serving you and it's not serving any of us for you to feel this way. Yeah, absolutely. And I also want to just take like the opportunity to say thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. You know, in 200 plus episodes of Just Break Up, we've never talked about pelvic floor dysfunction. And like, Absolutely. this is this is something that I've been thinking about lately, like how little we talk about um, pelvic floor health and how to... Um, how to manage that, how to have sex that isn't painful. Like, I, I just think that we don't, we, not only do we have this homogenized shame ridden um, understanding of sex um, that is given to us, whether we ask for it or not. Um, we also like have such a, horrible, horrible sex education and body comprehension when it comes to our bodies that like there are mm -hmm. people out there. And honestly, I would have been them, one of them a couple of years ago who would, who, who have to Google pelvic floor dysfunction and mm -hmm. that's okay. I mean, like if you're out there, go do it right now. And honestly, like think about your own bodies and um, your own wellness, because we're not empowered to take care of ourselves in that way. Um, and, I just want to thank you for being vulnerable and sharing it um, because in your loneliest corner of the void, you're going to, there's going to be listeners out there that say, oh my God, I always, I'm always in pain when I have penetrative sex and I always just put up with it. Mm -hmm. Or I always said no to penetrative sex because I, I thought something was wrong with me. I thought it was just me. And, yep. the, and the fact that you have like shared your story is going to be really illuminating for folks. Like, I think it's, I'm I'm thrilled that you did, to be honest, because when I learned about my pelvic floor, I was like, why the fuck are anyone <laughs> is anyone else talking about this? You yeah. know what I mean? It's 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 suppressing, you know, it's suppressing to feel like you were set up to fail. Your body was set up to fail. And 100%. again, like you said, um, tender, you have so many intersecting identities that have that that our society makes you feel like you're less than. And I just want you to know, um, I'm so grateful for exactly how you're arriving in this moment right now. Mm. Um, and when you are faced with that shame, like you wrote uh, this letter out so articulately about, you know, I know my partner has never said this. Like we have this great sex life. We are, we are intimate. We trust each other. Like, you know, all of this. And then I also know that shame comes up and that shame voice is so loud. It's so overbearing. Yep. Um, it's so rude, <laughs> you know, like you have to, it forces you to listen to it first. And the next time you hear that shame voice, I just want you to practice saying the exact opposite of that shame because it's it's a liar. It's it's not only is it is it a liar, but it's telling you the opposite. I want you to say, you know, if shame says I am not giving my partner what they want, tell me tell me, Sierra, the exact opposite, <laughs> yeah, right. and say that statement out loud. I am giving my partner what they want. Right? Mm -hmm. Shame says I am not enough and my body is broken. I am enough and my body is not broken, right? Mm -hmm. I want you, I know that like there's, I know that there's discomfort in saying those really like bold affirmative statements about ourselves because like literally everything in culture tells us not to, to like be in our power. But I want yep. you to say the exact opposite of what your shame tells you. I, I am not, you know, I, I, I'm the minority here and no, you know, everyone else is having better sex than I am. Yep. I am in a community and we're all having different types of sex, right? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. how can you f literally just say the opposite? <laughs> I can, I'm sure there are instances in which that doesn't work, but in this, in this letter, that's all I see is, is your, your shame telling you things that aren't true. Absolutely. And just remember too, that as you are actively trying to negate that shame by saying the opposite, remember that the shame that you're experiencing that that voice that's telling you these things is is trying to protect you right in its own fucked up way it's trying right. to keep you safe it's trying to tell you things so that so that you won't get hurt um and remember that you are deeply loved by me and sierra mm -hmm. first of all mm -hmm. <laughs> you yep. are deeply loved by your community you are deeply loved by your partner as well they they love you and love the sex that you're having 
and that you don't need to protect yourself from us, right? You don't need to protect yourself from all of that. For sure, the protection that we may need to experience around uh, the different systems of oppression that are causing us to feel the shame is real. Um, But I want you to remember that you are deeply loved, that there is absolutely nothing wrong with your body, and that protecting yourself doesn't look like making yourself small, but instead really trusting in the fact that people are going to love you and do love you because of who you are and not in spite of some sort of uh, deficiency that you think that you might have. Tenderness, we love you so much and we're so grateful to answer this question. We hope that this helps. Thank you so much for writing. All right, everyone. Our next letter comes from Blame the Girl, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing from New York, which is how it's spelled. (laughs) (laughs) New York. Uh, Dear Sam and Sierra, I, 22, she, her, have been dating my boyfriend, Jake, 22, he, him, for two years on and off. During our off time last year, Jake hooked up up with Emma, a girl in his friend group. Emma has had a crush on Jake for our entire relationship, but had always feigned support for our relationship before we broke up. Jake was extremely honest and apologetic about hooking up with Emma, even going so far as to tell her that he doesn't want to be friends with her anymore out of fear of ruining our relationship. That only goes so far because their friend group is super tight knit and they do a lot of things together socially. He's never alone with her and honestly barely goes out anymore, but she does come to big group gatherings that I'm also invited to like concerts. I don't blame Jake for hooking up with her and don't consider it cheating at all, but I do get a knot in my stomach every time I'm invited to hang out with their friend group and she's there. It drives me to anxiety I don't usually struggle with to the point of reconsidering plans I'm super excited for just because I don't want to see her there. It might be worth mentioning she's a year older than me and was in my sorority in college, so I always feel anxious seeing her because I feel like I'm intruding on her space with friends. I get along with their group super well, and the boys have really welcomed me in. To be honest, they sympathize with me because they know how beautiful mine and Jake's relationship is, and they fully support us. However, I never feel like I belong when she's there because she'll whisper with her other girlfriends, older, mostly older girls from my sorority, and shoot me side eyes all night. I purposely stay out of it and spend those nights trying to talk to the girls who don't treat me like that, at least in my face. And I've been very careful to not even interact with her in those settings because honestly, I don't know how to. I don't want anything to do with her purely because I don't think a fake friendship would serve any of us. Jake is always incredibly supportive of my feelings toward her and always goes out of his way to make sure I'm enjoying myself despite her being there. But her face makes me relive the most awful time in our relationship. We've done a lot of work on our respective trust in each other, and I'm so secure in our relationship, but something about her presence makes me revert back to feeling small and emotional like I did when I first heard that they had hooked up. It frustrates me to no end that I still struggle with this feeling after a year of rebuilding our relationship and that I very much blame the girl, even though I know I'm not supposed to. How do I regulate my feelings and anxiety surrounding her? How do I be the bigger person when she makes me feel so small? Am I feminism in wrong because I harbor such intense (laughs) negative feelings towards her? I don't want her to linger in our relationship, but she makes me so upset that I don't know how to help myself. Any commentary would be super appreciated. I love you both so much and your podcast saved me during our breakup. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter. Love, blame the girl. Oh, my darling, thank you so much for writing and for trusting us with this letter. Yeah, I mean, this sucks and is relatable. <laughs> do you uh, do you have like a lived experience like this, Sam? Um, I'm, I can think of like several where sure. there was either like an ex or somebody there was like an infidelity person mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I would um, have to share space with them or like the impending threat of sharing space with them was like almost worse, you know, like is so-and-so going to be at the party? I don't know. I'll text this person or like we have to walk by where she works or whatever. I don't know. Um, it's real and relatable. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Yes. I, um, have been cheated on, but never had to like run into the person that the person cheated on me with. Yeah. But I did date someone who had had sex with like most of his friends and was like kind of part of his identity (laughs) Yeah, Uh, and then had to like be friends with all these people that he had like slept with. Um, And luckily they were all like most of them were like very nice to me and like very kind. Mm -hmm. Um, And And this is when you were younger and less. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Secure. Yeah, no, Uh, no, for sure. Um, 
And also he he cheated on me. So like there was like a lot going on there. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know what we're talking about, guys. No, we don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, uh, anyway. I would <laughs> never, ever want to be 22 years old again. So uh, I yeah, also feel for you <laughs> in, <yeah>. <laughs> in that. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, my darling. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple things that you can do here. Um, and I think the first thing we want to offer is some perspective shifts, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I talked about this recently on our like Patreon Zoom that we do once a month. If you're interested in hanging out with us on Zoom, you can slide over to Patreon to find out how to do that. Um, But I was chatting um, this past month about um, how I've been trying to reapproach issues that I'm continually struggling with, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like instead of. Instead of like, oh, man, I can't believe I, I still am not over this. I'm still not um, changed or or evolved or whatever. What if I practice like some radical acceptance and say like, OK, this is how I feel. What is it trying to tell me and how can it serve me? Or like, how can I how can I take this situation as is and 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 adjust to it if, if it's not changing, you know, it sounds like this is you've been struggling with this for so long and it's not changing the the way you're approaching it now. So how can we how can we settle with this? And mm. something I'm not sure if that makes sense, but I guess a better way to say that is like maybe the purpose of these feelings is not to get rid of them, but to get through them every day, like get used to them. <laughs> like, sure. that sounds strange but okay so you feel uncomfortable around this girl does she have an effect on your relationship outside of those feelings of discomfort does she have a threat to your relationship outside of the the nostalgia of that pain no mm. the, your boyfriend has Ooh. gone above and beyond the to say nostalgia like of the pain i love that <laughs> thank you <laughs> Um, your boyfriend has gone above and beyond to say, like, I don't want to hang out with this person. She's not my friend. He checks in with you. So, Mm -hmm. like, the threat to your relationship is the past pain, right? So, can you, can you get used to the discomfort? Like, I, in my notes, I wrote exposure therapy. (laughs) And (laughs) I'm only, like, half joking. Like, what if you were like, okay, I'm going to go to this show and I'm going to feel uncomfortable because she's going to be there. But also, you know... I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to be cheerful and stupid. I'm going to pretend mm-hmm. that she's not bothering me. I'm going to say like, this is going to be uncomfortable, uncomfortable, but only for 15 minutes, only for 40 minutes, maybe only for the whole concert. I'm always thinking about where she is, but sitting in that discomfort and saying like, I can't, I can't mentally process my way through the, not having these feelings. So instead I'm going to muscle through them. I'm going to just experience them and say yep. this, and I can do that. I can do hard things. I can be in uncomfortable situations. And I, I'm saying this from a point of personal experience because I had a similar scenario and I realized like, I just had to get through it. And yep. then getting through it took that thing off its pedestal. I got home and I was like, well, it wasn't as salacious and dramatic and painful as I thought it was. I guess mm-hmm. I can do this again. And slowly those feelings of insecurity got chipped away and were replaced with normalcy. Like, yeah, For this sure. woman exists. We can't change the past. She's Absolutely. not a threat to your relationship. And I, and I may feel uncomfortable around her and also... I know that this discomfort exists. I've experienced it before and I've gotten through it before. Right. Like, and then yeah. like Sierra said, like it takes this emotion off of the, off of its pedestal. We don't have to be afraid of it anymore. Right. Like yes. I can interact with this person. I don't want to interact with because I am a strong person. And because I've done this before and because this person actually has no impact on my life, I just have to get through this concert with them. Right. Right. Um, I'll also say like, I want to take, I want to take her off the pedestal a little bit too. And I want to also take you off the pedestal a little bit as mm. well, <laughs> which is all to say like one of the things that can also help me in these types of situations is noticing the stories that I'm telling myself about what is happening. Right. So I want you to go into a place where all you're doing is just describing the things that are happening to you and not telling yourself the story about them. Right. Yeah. So when you're like, she's whispering to other other girls that are part of the group 
that's the describe. Like that is the situation that's happening. The story you're telling yourself is that she's talking about you or that she's whispering about mm-hmm. your relationship or she's making fun of you or she's talking about how much she's in love with Jake, right? Like that's the interpretation of what's happening. Mm-hmm. But there's also a million other interpretations of what's going on there, right? Like she could be whispering about her pelvic floor dysfunction, right? Like she could be whispering. I, I would be so proud of her <laughs> if she was. She could be whispering about how big of a crush she has on Matt, right? She could be whispering about, I know, right? She could be whispering (sighs) about the anxiety she's feeling about the thing that she has to do the next day, right? Like there's a hundred million reasons why she might be whispering to someone else. And also like this idea that she's like giving you side eyes, right? Like the interpretation is, I don't know, that she doesn't like you or that she thinks you're pathetic or that she's like trying to steal your man, right? What's happening is she's looking at you, (laughs) right? Mm. Like that's the, that is the thing in its most objective way. She's looking at you and there's a lot of different reasons why she might be jealous of you. She might be like, oh, I really like her hair. She might be like, oh, she talked with her hands and it like caught the corner, caught the corner of my eye. And now I'm looking right. Like there's so many different reasons why she might be looking at you. Absolutely. She could, she could be deeply uncomfortable with you as well. She could be insecure. Yeah. Right. So like all of those things might be true. You're choosing to tell yourself this story about what's happening because it's an easy story for you to understand. It's a helpful story to reinforce other stories that you've been telling yourself about yourself and your relationship. And I want to invite you to spend more time in just the observation phase. Oh, she's yeah. whispering with other people. Yeah. That's it. And like, right? like that's and honestly, it. No, if like, you're going to tell your, <laughs> if you're going to tell yourself stories, tell yourself stories of like, she is uncomfortable. Yeah. Or she's looking at me because she likes my boyfriend. Right. P- period. She's looking at me because she's awkward about the fact that we're all here together. Right. Like, yes, she feels awkward. Yeah. And yep. she, She's looking at me because she thinks I'm really hot. Whatever the story you want to tell yourself is, right? It's probably better than Sam's point was better. Like, don't don't (laughs) don't don't tell yourself. I'm with you. Yeah, you know, you say her face represents this hard, the hardest time of your relationship. Again, perspective shift. What if her face no longer represents that? That's like the most profound thing I've ever said. (laughs) (laughs) What if it? What if it wasn't instead? Instead, what if you were like, I'm not going to think that way anymore. I like it. <laughs> but but not for bad real, advice. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but for real, uh, like, like I said, so earlier, you know, we're just going to accept these feelings. So what if her face, na- instead of, instead of a threat to your relationship, her face now represents, I can do hard things or I can be uncomfortable for a short time or my, my emotions are allowed to change and grow with me. Um, what if her face... N- now represents like trust in your boyfriend because he's with you and he's not with her. Like he, he slept with her. They had their try and he got back together with you, you know? And again, I know that like our insecurities are, your insecurities are listening to this and being like, those fucking two Geminis don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> they're lying and like Geminis that. do. <laughs> I know. Listen, all astrology signs lie. <laughs> but from Geminis, you get it twice. <laughs> That's right. We're just really good at it. <laughs> oh, God. I don't. Anyway, like, say to yourself out loud, she doesn't, she doesn't represent what I think she represents. Instead, her face... No, fuck that. Her face is a nothing face. No offense to this person. (laughs) In this instance, you're going to go there and you're going to say, I'm going to this concert because I want to hang out with my friends and I want to be with my boyfriend and I want to see this musician or whatever. She's also there. Two things Mm -hmm. are true at the same time. I'm going to have a great time and I'm also going to have to face something that makes me uncomfortable. I can do both things at once. Absolutely. And also, you don't have to get to a point where you like this woman. Like, that is fine. Like, she does not have to be your friend, right? Feminism doesn't mean that we like all women, right? Like that's, yes. that is not the definition. Uh, so like, if you don't want to be friends with this person, great, that's fine. You don't have to be. Um, and, but I want you to rewrite the story about her that you're telling yourself, right? Not so that you can like be chums with her, but in yes. a way to help you figure out What does it look like to be in this space with someone who I have these insecurities about this person who hasn't necessarily been super nice to me in the past, right? Like all of those things Mm -hmm. I want you to figure out, but not because you're like feminism mean wrong, right? Like, 
right? There is for sure this narrative that we have that like the women seduce the men and then that's why men cheat, right? And no, men cheat because they're assholes um, <laughs> or because they're experiencing their own rich right. emotional state that is leading to them to that decision. Um, but you don't have to be friends with this woman. It's okay right. that you mm-hmm. feel insecure around her. It's okay that you don't like her. Like all of that is fine. And I think that there's a way that you can get to a point where you can still not like her maybe, but not feel this intensely about her in a way that's doing you so much, so much harm and so much pain. Absolutely. I totally agree. My darling, we hope that this helps. Thank you so much for writing. We love you. All right, everyone, this brings us to the blind date segment of our episode. This is when we try and set you up with something we think you are really going to like this week. We want to send you home with. All right. A little bit of a callback. I want you to check out the podcast XO High Yourself by <laughs> Bunny Michael. Perfect. Um, honestly, I, I full disclosure, I listen to this podcast. I don't listen to many podcasts these days. For um, sure. Bunny really helps center myself. Um, they help me. They give me language to talk about my own experience. They give me language, words, um, perspectives that I apply to this show. Um, and so it is another advice podcast where people either write in or they call in, but they talk more generally about like, you know, career advice, about um, spirituality, about um, body acceptance, of, uh, you know, the full scope of the human experience, kind of like just break up, but like without the relationship <laughs> lens. For sure. um, and um, their show moves at a little bit different of a pace of ours. So like, it's a great I think it's a great cousin podcast to go hand in hand with ours. If you like self-help, if you like advice, I, I, I love this show and I'm so proud to help make it happen. Please. If you love just break up, please go check out XO higher self, wherever you find your podcasts. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. You can like us on Facebook and you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Just Break Up Pod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at JustBreakUpPod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise and tickets to our upcoming live show happening on September 30th. It's a Friday in downtown St. Paul. Um, it's an all ages show. Please check it out. You can get tickets right now at justbreakuppod.com. Please remember to subscribe, follow, and give us a five-star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts and consider supporting us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode. Also, if you subscribe at $10 a month, like Sierra said, we are doing monthly Zooms with the $10 a month folks. And they've been Uh, so fun. They're so fun. So so cute. So charming. Great to see people's faces. Absolutely. I think the last one we had maybe like 15 people people there. So if you want to come and chat with me and Sierra, or if you want to sit with your camera off and just be part of the Mm -hmm. group, that's also totally fine. But that's patreon.com slash just break up pod. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers, giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, production, audio. I'm changing All up the, the words for some yeah. reason. <laughs> All the magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis, a.k.a. Big Cats. Make sure to, ch- sure to check out XO Higher Self again because he is now producing that podcast. Great, great. And remember, the next time your shame tells you that you are unlovable, Say, I am full of life and so very lovable. Next time it tells you that you are broken, tell it I am whole even as I become. And the next time your shame tells you you are alone, say, look, look at all these other people in the void with me. And if all else fails, just break up.